room. Uh, it is so good to be together this morning, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing I want to do is I want to... Can't hear me? Okay. Well, that would help. Trying to reserve battery on my microphone. How about now? Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. Hey, that's a problem they have with me at church often is I don't turn on my mic. Um, it's so good to be together, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, my name is Pastor Tim Bostick. I'm the pastor at Limestone Church, uh, the church that Nick is at and Nancy was part of as well. And uh, on behalf of the Stabler family, I want to welcome everyone coming here this day and celebrating. This is a day of celebration. And I'll, I'll talk more about that as we go on. You guys getting that? Yeah. Test? Okay. Um, I, I want to remind everyone we're here for two reasons. Both are about bearing witness to something. First one is bearing witness to Nancy's life. The fact that she was a gift and a blessing and we're here to celebrate that. Might be a little grieving. I know, Nick, this is a hard day for you and your family. And, um, but it's also a day that we rally around you. And uh, to just support, to prayer, to wrap you in love and care and compassion. It's also a day, though, to bear witness to something else. And that is, we believe that this is not the end. That although we're here... Because of Nancy's death, we're not here to proclaim that the death that Nancy has experienced is the end, that there's something more. We'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes, but um, I want to begin us with just a, a word of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God. We are grateful for this time and this day, for the chance to gather in the midst of this pandemic. We pray your uh, will and your presence with us. We pray that we're, uh, there's grief um, and mourning, that you're providing comfort and peace. We pray for a time of celebration, both to remember the gift of Nancy Stabler and to remember your promise that you do not abandon us, even to the grave. And so, Lord, we're thankful. And we ask you now to be upon each of us as we... Uh, use this opportunity to bear witness and it is in the name of your son jesus the christ that i pray amen tim is it okay if i switch to this might be a little better is that a little better a little bit okay good um, a, a couple of the things I want to lift up as we proceed with our time together is the fact that um, we have two friends of Nancy that were not able to be here. And um, the first one is Deb Barano. And so she actually had provided the scripture readings today that I'm going to use. And she had already spoken with Nancy about this, I believe, if, if, if that's correct, Nick. And so it's special to be able to bring those to you um, as well. And the second person that I want to lift up uh, is Beverly Hess. And Beverly is not able to be here. She lives in Virginia. And uh, I have a special note from her as well that I'll be reading a little bit later in the service. And so... Uh, the other thing, and I'll, I'll go ahead and make that announcement now so that you are aware, is after this scripture reading, um, I'm going to invite if there's anyone here who would like to uh, come up and say anything um, regarding Nancy and your relationship, it would be totally appropriate. 
And so I uh, just want to give you a heads up on that. So our first scripture reading is uh, from the book of wisdom. Um, and so I, you know what I need, Tim, is I need my computer out of there. I actually have it on my computer. Thank you. And it's from chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 and verse 9. Uh, and it's a reading from the book of wisdom. It says this, the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction. And they're going forth from us, utter destruction. But they are in peace. For it, if before humans indeed they be punished, yet in their hope full of immortality, chastened a little, they shall be greatly blessed. Because God tried them and found them worthy of God's self. As gold in the furnace, God proved them. And as sacrificial offerings, God took them to self. Those who trust in the Lord shall understand truth. And the faithful shall abide with the Lord in love. Because grace and mercy are with God's holy ones. And God's care is with the elect. It's a beautiful text of the reminder of God's assurance with us. And so what a, what a great reading. Um, as I told you, there is a, a time in which we might share our own reflections of Nancy. And uh, if there is anyone here, um, I will go ahead and invite you to come up. I do want to read this first. And this is from Beverly Hess, and she sent it to Nick. She writes, A true friend doesn't care if you're broke, what you weigh, if your house is a mess, or if your family is messy. And we are. That's the reality of it. Family is always messy. They love you for who you are. Love that line. Nancy was this person. Nancy and I met in third grade. She was fun, always happy, and accepting. Never a shy bone in her body. I think we can attest to that. Fast forward to sixth grade, even when she wanted to know if a certain boy liked her. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. I don't know if that was you in, in sixth grade, was it? <laughs> hmm. Me being a good friend, I rode my bike to St. John's Catholic Church, where she knew he would be. I asked John, I think he said yes. Upon riding off, I crashed my bike and fractured my arm. <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished, by the way. Just all of this because Nancy was my true friend. Did she hold that against Nancy all those years? Doing <laughs> Through the years to follow, she would always reach out to me. Nancy is and continues to be a rare jewel that was gifted to me from God. As many family and friends know you would never mention you liked something or that something need to be done. Sure enough, she would get Nick to fix it or she would give it or ship it. <laughs> Nancy never gave it a second thought. She would often speak of opportunities her and Nick had to help those in need. 
especially when their church did the garden or food baskets. Nancy was an optimist, especially during her declining health. Never did she say, why me? She was an example of a woman who believed that God was her strength. Through the years, uh, she would, uh, when things would be tough, she would say, God will only give me what I can handle. One day I told her that there was more to that scripture, that he would give you a way of escape. And it's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Who doesn't know or choose, but trust that God makes a way. During these times, we would talk about Jesus. Her being raised Catholic and myself Pentecostal. It's a match, by the way. She had questions about many different things that she had been taught. I was able to show her what the Bible said especially when it came to having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I had the honor of leading her to salvation through Christ Jesus. My greatest joy was knowing that one day we would be reunited and spend eternity together. As many of you, I love Nancy so much, but not as much as her loving and devoted Nick, mm. nor her son Nathan and Nicholas, who she adored. As per her request months before her homecoming, I was supposed to sing this at her funeral. I am not going to sing this next part. I want to be very clear of that, but I will speak it. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, Nancy, how much we love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Nancy is, has left this home to her forever home with Jesus Christ. She will always be my sweetie and I her darling. Mm, wonderful and beautiful. Beautiful. I want to invite if there is anyone else who would like to come up and share a story. I remind us that um, it's the memories that is the gift of God that you and I have the ability to remember, to recall, to experience one another, to experience life itself with other people. And that then we accept that gift and we carry it and we hold it. It's what's meant when someone says, I have Nancy with me. She's still here. It's the living memory, the living presence that we experience. Even today, months after her passing. And so, is there anyone? You can use either microphone. Hi, I am Debbie, Nancy's youngest sister. Well, she's two years older than me. And she is a very, she's been missed and will be missed. Um, we were best friends. She would do anything for anyone if they asked or she found out that they needed help, she would help them. Um, I just miss her a lot. Like I said, we were best friends and I know that people know her as giving to people and helping people. That's all. Um, Anyone else?
I'm Nancy's oldest brother. Uh, I go by Tony, but uh, my family calls me Anthony, at least my mother and a couple sisters. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, Nick has been a wonderful, wonderful husband and a loving husband, and uh, Nancy was a, a loving sister and did a lot of nice things and good things for people. And I know she's in heaven with my parents and all the generations before us. Thank you, and God bless all of you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mm. Okay. We have a, a next, we have a song. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard it before. It's a Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. And uh, this is a little bit of a special version in that it was um, recorded not long ago, a few months ago, uh, by members of our church. Um, and, and I know that, that she wanted uh, Alexa Shoals and uh, Roger Cooper to, to be part of this and to sing a song. And uh, so we had this recording that we can play for you now. And um, it's just truly a special, special song for Nick to be able to hear as well. Thank you. 
The second scripture reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. It's titled, A New Heaven and a New Earth. John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them forever. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Joe, would you take this? Thank you. Appreciate that. Hmm. Years ago, I heard... Um, from someone who worked with children in Atlanta who were impoverished. And one of the stories that he told was that there was a group of children that were um, especially, um, they, they were in a different way than the other group of children. They'd never been out of their city. Their lives were... Um, so difficult. They had abuse and struggles, and um, this camp that he was part of helped them to kind of experience new opportunities in life, to prepare them for life on their own a little bit later. And uh, this particular one um, was part of a group that he had taken up to uh, Black Mountain, which is just outside Asheville, North Carolina. And there they had a, uh, a, a home on top of a mountain ridge. And you could sit on the deck of that home, you could look out and just see beauty. Um, if you've ever been down to that part of the country, it's spectacular. Uh, but this particular trip, he had taken this group and one morning he woke up and he walks uh, to the uh, window and he sees this young woman out on the deck and she has a cup of coffee and she's just staring and he said uh he he opened the door he walked out he said good morning and when she turned around she was sobbing and he thought oh no this is the time for her to kind of reveal the messiness of her life the struggles that she's had already grown up and i'm not sure this is really the setting or the time that I wanna, wanna hear that. And um, he, he, he finally said, you know, what's wrong? And she said, how can I ever tell them? And he thought, oh boy, this is gonna be bad. And she said, how can I ever tell them the beauty that I see? Remember, she had never left Atlanta, and she never saw the beauty of the mountains. And for her first time in her life, she had seen something that God had created that she's never witnessed. And how would she put words to other people who had never seen it? That illustration 
is one that I carry in a moment like this. Nancy is on the mountaintop. And she sees a sight that you or I only get a glimpse of. And today she sees the mountains and God in all of his glory. Praise be to God for that. Well, I met Nancy uh, when I first got to Limestone back in January. It seems like 10 years ago. I just got to be honest with y'all. just seems forever. Um, and and uh, I, I was able to visit with her when pretty quickly coming. And, and Nick, you and I met and we sat around the kitchen table and, and she shared the fact that she had um, her her diagnosis her health struggle and and the fact that um, she knew what direction this was going to go in and uh, there were a couple of things that I remember clearly in that first conversation one was uh, Nick you were there and and you were a mess and I love you and I'm here for you and uh, we go back to that day it was just kind of facing the reality of the future and I know how hard it was and Nancy knew how hard it was for you um, and uh, she she was aware of that she knew that for her family it was going to be a difficult journey and she also knew that she loved you so much that if she could take that away she would um, and and that that was part of her ministry in the midst of her own illnesses and struggles. And so the, the second thing, though, that I learned at that moment was how decisive Nancy was. She knew what she wanted, and when she made up her mind of what she wanted, it was going to happen. Either Nick was going to do it or someone else was going to do it because she was clear on what it was, and today is her day. And that was the message that she was clear on. When you all gather to remember me, this is my day. Now, I'm going to share something with you. She gave me the plans for today. <laughs> now, I'm not going to read them all, but, but she knew exactly what she wanted. She wanted this to be orderly and, and how it was to be focused and and. Um, I, I, I joke about the fact that, you know, there's no wonder that she made her way into the Presbyterian Church where we do everything decently and in order. Um, but she also knew the other thing, and, and that is, Nick, you were going to need it. You were going to need it. And that, that she could provide this day as a gift and the planning as a gift to you. And, and so... She shared, and so I want to I want to um, share just a couple of things that she wrote that I get to share. I'm, I'm not going to share them all, but just a few. Um, one is it, uh, she wrote her own obituary, and it was long and detailed and wonderfully uh, focused on the fact that her life carried with it so many joys as well as the messiness. That's the reality of all of our lives. I, I, I think of the passage where it says, um, you know, uh, who, who would lay down their life um, for the imperfect? That one might lay down his life for the perfect. But it's the imperfect that we live. But she writes this. This is uh, a couple of interesting things. One is um, that she was a very hard worker and dedicated to her jobs. And so anything she did, she was focused. And to get done at 14, she got her working papers to be able to work. First job at McDonald's in Ellesmere. And so, um, you know, that, that focus, that tenacity. Uh, she um, also, though, despite all her focus and work and planning, she wants us to remember her as a dedicated mother to her sons. And that, 
that her sons are remarkable and that she has such love not only for her sons but her um, her wonderful uh, daughter-in-law Tricia as well and that this love transcends even her death she wanted to make sure we heard that um, she tells a story of how she recalls Nathan and his first hit in a baseball game and how she ran to the base after he got to the base and hugged him <laughs> which is interesting <laughs> but how active she was in their lives is the issue we already heard that she loved helping people uh, here she writes that uh, she was a community service person who loved giving her heart and love out to others that's why we're here today she had um, skill and uh, just focus on her own aspect of life that was about others and she was involved in community she tells a funny story of how uh, she was involved in uh, the capital little league and she noticed that they didn't have um, any sodas they had both coke and pepsi and so she was able to uh, work with those companies to get Pepsi to come in and kind of outbid Coke and and get uh, get more uh, soda and even get a lighted scoreboard for the Little League and I think that's part of her tenacity as well. So um, we remember that. Of course, the the highlight of her life was on September tenth. 1982 and that of course is the day of her marriage to Nick and so she writes that she leaves behind her most wonderful and loving husband who she dearly loves and then she writes she enjoyed her life along with her husband along with her kids at the beach which is a reminder of some of her own uh, love and uh, enjoyment in life and, and love to travel as well bike rides she loved fields and flowers so and also known for her cooking and baking and I did not get to experience that but I'm sure many of you have um, but just uh, someone who was just loving loving and I think there's there's um, she wrote uh, for a mass card what she would like on it flowers bloom and colors provide butterflies follow to open them wide birds sing and brighten the day so when you think of me I am not far away I love you dearly and I am close by with arms wide open to hug you goodbye. Spread the love and joy to people within and be blessed to know you were my friends. I love you with all my heart, so don't think we're far apart. Hmm. I think the other thing that is important for us to remember as I told you, we're here to bear witness to her life, but we're also here to bear witness to God's love. And Nancy knew that love. We heard it a couple of different times, a couple of different ways, from family members, from friends. She was committed in her faith. And that's amazing and wonderful. But I also want to remind us all, it's not the only story fact that God was committed in his faith for her and I think that's the part that I continue to remember that that someone who cares so much about others is an outgrowth of the knowledge that she too was loved and cared for I think it's only natural then that she would want to care about others to serve others to put others' needs 
even in all her own messiness and all of her own struggles to focus on the needs of others. I think that is the wonderful gift that she knew was an outgrowth of her faith. Last thing I want to do is I um, have a, a, a poem that I want to read, a short one. It's called The Guest House. And it's uh, by uh, Jula Din Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes even from an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be cleaning you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing. Invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Friends, embrace who we are. Love one another for who we are. I think that's the message that Nancy is conveying to us in all of our life. Love one another. Be kind. Help others. This is the memory that we carry with us. Praise be to God. Amen. A final song is on Eagle's Wings.
Let us pray once again. Lord God, whose days are without end and whose mercies beyond counting, keep us mindful that life is indeed short and the hour of death is unknown. And may your spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of your holiness, of your peace, of your justice, that we may serve you with all your people, sure in faith, strong in hope, and perfected in love. And Lord, when our earthly journey is ended, lead us rejoicing into your kingdom where you live forever and ever. And now, Lord, hear our voices as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My final scripture reading is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We have a, a service of dedication for those who have passed from um, this local VFW.
our Father in heaven. We seek thee with whom there is no death. Open every eye to behold him who changed the night of death into morning. In the depths of our hearts, we would hear the divine word. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. We beseech thee to look in mercy on this bereaved family and in thine own tenderness, console, cons console and comfort them. Through thy great mercy, may we all meet at last in joy before thy throne in heaven, and to thy name shall be praise forever and ever. Amen. We gather here, my brothers and sisters, to perform the last rites the living may ren render the dead. That we are born to die is a solemn truth, the fixed law of being. Honor and station have no power to arrest the hand of the destroyer, and youth and age, how alike before him. How filled with gloom would it would be this hour were it not for the blessed promise of God of our internal home with him. Another one of our members have, has been taken from us. We shall miss her words of counsel, her watchful care over the interests of our honored heroes and her devotion to our auxiliary. Her life here was full of sacrifices and she has gone to her rewards in honor and reverence I now place upon her last resting place this emblem of loyalty, patriotism as the last tribute to her memory. For as much as, as it has pleased God to take out of this world the soul of our departed friend, it shows how beautifully true is the comparison of life to this flower, which opens up in the morning, but in the evening withers away. It is a symbol of purity and a token of love. I place it here in loving remembrance of this departed life. Nancy was one of the people that, you know, there's a lot of people that stand up front and run meetings and uh, speak to people, but Nancy was one of the behind the scenes people. And no matter how strong your organization is, if you don't have the people behind you doing the things that nobody ever sees, it won't be, it won't be able to accomplish its goals. Nancy, if we needed, um, we were going to have an event. We needed cakes and pies and cooks and cookies, and she would be there. She would be the first in line. And she wouldn't bring one thing. She'd bring five or six things. She would cook all the day before. And I often asked her how she could do that, being feeling so ill. She said, Patty, it takes my mind off of myself, and it puts it on the people that I'm doing this for. She said, I could walk through this kitchen with my oxygen on and my tank will follow me, but I can still cook and I can do what needs to be done. One of the things that our post was trying to do was to raise funds for a, um, an AED machine, which is pretty important in these days. And when you came in the front door, if you did, you saw it up on the wall. Well, we were trying to find ways to raise money for that and Nancy jumped right up. She said, I'm going to sell candy bars. So she drove around in her car. She dropped them off wherever they needed to be dropped to. Uh, she met me in my parking lot. Couldn't get out of the car on her oxygen, but she said, here, Patty. Patty, thank you for selling these candy bars for me. And she couldn't go out and do it, but she could make sure they got sold. And right now we have an AED machine out in the hallway, much thanks to Nancy. So when you go out, take a peek at it, 
and remember that that was from her. Our Heavenly Father, who art our refuge and strength in our time of trouble, enable us, we pray, to put our trust in thee. May we come boldly unto thy throne, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Receive now these words from our benediction as we now go forth as God's people. Go in peace. And may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, the one who equips you with everything good, for doing his good will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forevermore. And now may the love of God, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who blesses and consoles in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with each of us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Uh, do we need to give some instructions, Nick, about from here? So um, we understand the food will come out momentarily. And I think there's going to be a table set up table for a bar great okay so um okay well then i think what i'm hearing is as that happens we'll figure out how to navigate the room i don't know if, if someone's going to be responsible is there anyone here who's going to be responsible for the tables getting to the food yes Thank God. <laughs> so let me let me say quick a, a quick uh, prayer for the food, if that's okay. And by the way, I want to thank uh, the the people here who have provided this meal. So let's pray. Uh, how good are you, O oh God, that we might gather in this day of memory and witness, and we might share table fellowship now uh, through the gift of love and care and food. And so bless not only the meal we're about to eat, but the hands that prepared it and are serving it. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Hello, everyone. Uh, we just need about five minutes or so to put the food out uh, on the on the table. We didn't want it to have it get cold. So if I will be coming around to um, tell what tables to go up when we're ready. In the meantime, if you'd like to take a break, use the restrooms, or go out to the front bar, you're certainly welcome to do so. If you'd like to come up, take a look at some of the pictures, feel free. And I'll let you know when to start.